Hey, hey, Railbirds, we're back at the 2023 Derby City Classic. We have round five, nine ball action for you. Jason Shaw versus Mike DeShane. Both players have zero losses. This match brought to you in uh, cooperation with Bad Boys, along with Hustlin' Clothing Company, and the players are lagging, so we'll, uh, we'll let them lag, and then we can uh, go through the sponsors real quick. That's Mike DeShane at the top of the screen with the three ball. Jason Shaw with the eight. Jason wins that lag. All right, this live stream also brought to you by Hustlin' Clothing USA, as well as JB Cases, Jerry Olivier, Custom Cues, as well as Letman Lights. Thank you for your support. Also, this tournament is put on by Diamond Billiard Products, along with Simonis Cloth, Aramith Billiard Balls, Outsville Accurac, Mastered Billiard Chalk, and be sure to check out AccuStats Video Productions for their coverage of this tournament as well. They have great matches over there. I am being joined by Mark White. How you doing, Mark? Thanks for this match. This looks like an absolute cracker of the game. Two of it my favorite be. players, actually. Should be a good match. Shouldn't be boring, that's for sure. Yes. Shaw. Mr. Shaw. Three ball in the corner. One in the side. Two. Oh, another ball. Seven, I think, went in the side as well. No shot, I don't think, on the two ball. Three balls down. I think he might have just a slither of it. I don't know if he can play some kind of safety off it. Can always push out as well, of course. Yeah, three balls on the break and no shot. Sounds about right. Typical. Yeah, has the option, though, to push out just to explain the push out to you guys maybe you're new to the sport after the break you have the incoming player so if you've broke if you made a ball you're still at the table you're allowed to call what's called a push out so you can hit the cue ball anywhere you want you can hit any ball you can make any ball you don't have to hit a rail but the other side of the coin of course is Incoming now is Mike DeShane. If he doesn't like the look of this, he can give it back. So he, Jason's played like a, a shot there to try and tempt Mike into this long two ball. It will go past the five. Four ball to follow it, which is down this end. Nearest ball to his cue now. Wow, what a stroke Mike put on that ball. Is he going to get a yeah, shot? What a, stroke, not. what a stroke of bad luck as well. Wow, terrific shot. And I've not really seen Mike DeShane play a lot. I was due to have an interview with him one time, but his game of golf took a little bit longer than it should have done. So I never got to interview him on that occasion, but I'm told he's got a very, very good cue action, very smooth cue action. And look at his Fargo, still over 800. He's part of the 30 club and he rarely plays these days. Spends more time selling windows and doors. That is the sad part about this sport that we all love so much. Is yeah, it just doesn't uh, just doesn't pay the bills for most of us. Yeah, so it's a very easy hook on here. Oh, he can play it to the side pocket as well. I'm sure he'll go for the pot. Very attacking player. Well, just as I say that, he plays the safety. And it was, you know, dead sad, wasn't it? So why not play it? Yeah, the safety was, you know, dead simple. I just got to shoot a stop shot. But I am a little surprised Jason didn't go for that four because it was a pretty wide open run out. Yeah, I was a little bit shocked, to be honest. Good hit. Is he oh, going to make that's it? That's why. This he is, is why, you know, anything can happen, can't it? As you mentioned in a previous match. 
Jason sponsored by Perry Q's. It's been switching between carbon fibre and wood just recently. Nice use of the nine ball. So low left on the cue ball from this five ball. Come back to somewhere sort of over this side of the table, just past centre maybe. Yeah, just keeping it simple. It's not trying to do anything fancy. He can he knows he can make the six ball from just about anywhere. And with that, Jason takes first game, one nothing in this race to nine. So here at the Derby City, we are racking with the nine ball on the spot. So the whole rack is shifted forward a little bit. One in the front, nine in the middle. The rest of the balls must be at random, so no pattern racking. Except for the two ball. The two ball must not be racked at the back of the rack. You have to put it somewhere else. Preferably in a new spot every time, so, you know, no pattern racking. And we are breaking from the break box, which is between the first and third diamonds. A little bit bigger than the break box that, say, Matchroom uses. Right, but cue ball, ball. cue ball ended up in the drink. Ball in hand for Mike. Yeah, there was talk of Mike making a comeback to all the big tournaments, but it didn't really happen. Former Moscone player. I believe. You think this players of this class, Kevin, selling windows and doors criminal isn't it such talent <laughs> yeah Mike has played for the Team USA Moscone Cup on four separate occasions pretty well for a guy that doesn't really play that much anymore for a guy with a day job yeah are you familiar with a a guy called Andrew Cleary no, I am not. He does a lot of videos and stuff like that. He actually works for a, a big company uh, producing, you know, uh, quality videos and stuff. And he just reminds me of this guy so much. Andrew, a good player as well. Not quite this standard. He won't mind me saying. 1-1 one, one then, Jason Shaw against Mike DeShane. 
racing tonight in these early stages of the 2023 Derby City Classic. Yep, this is round five. Each player has zero losses. So the way that works is uh, Derby City is not your traditional double elimination format. It's basically like a single elimination with uh, a re with one rebuy. So after every round, all the players that are still left in the tournament, they scramble up all the names and pair them off and assign matches every round. So there's a new draw every round. So you might get a player with zero losses playing someone with one loss at any point in the tournament. So it's not just a winner's bracket and a loser's bracket. You know, Jason's just said something to him. He racked the two at the back, and it's the only place you're not allowed to rack it. So Jason just having a, a word with him, I'm sure, just saying, no, you can't put it there, mate. Put it somewhere else. Nine on the spot, one always at the head of the diamond, of course. And all the rest of the balls are racked randomly, apart from the two, which is not allowed to go at the back. You know now, and so does Mike DeShane. He's hmm. breaking off level, trying to make the eight ball in this bottom left-hand corner as we look. Oh, oh, he made the one. He made the cue ball as well. And he's left this wide open for Jason. Yeah, Jason did it in his last break. He's got some flashy red trainers on there. Look, Jason Short. Watching him play in the Hanoi Open earlier on today. He actually changed his shirt halfway through from the one that he's wearing now to a white one. I don't know why. I think it was very hot in the arena. That could have had something to do with it. Yeah, I've heard they don't have any five, air conditioning there. He was 5-1. I think they do. I just think they were struggling to get it right that because be. you get so many different conditions there, you know. Hanoi, very, very humid. And today there was over 2,000 spectators in there, which would have made it a lot warmer as well, of course. Maybe harder for the air conditioning to keep up. Yeah. Didn't want to catch that six ball. He's hooked himself. Now, does he going to try and make this off this side rail? I think he's got to. Well, maybe not. Or can he kick it? He may try off to spin in rail. So no. He may try to spin in rail first, but no, he's just kicking at it. Oh, he's going to go the other way. Wow. Yeah, I don't think he was playing that, was he? If he was going to kick it, he would have gone the other way, surely. Much easier. Now, does Mike go for this bank, or does he just try to play safe, like behind the seven, maybe? Mike plays a pretty aggressive game. He might go for this bank. Yeah, it's tempting, isn't it? He's in a nice position for the bank as well. Well, he's just changed his mind whatever he was going to do. So he's trying adjustment. to so he's trying to thin off the inside edge and he's missed the ball. And do you know what? You you just cannot change your mind when you're down on the shot and, and not get up and, and re-aim, you know? Yeah, yeah, you need to make up your mind before you get down and if for some reason you have to change your mind after you're down, you got to stand back up and reset. Yeah, I totally agree. Maybe that comes from not really playing enough. So 2-1 to Jason. And you get the feeling, if he can get the break going, Mike might have very few shots. It is winner breaks or winner's option. But of course that normally translates into winner breaks. Normally. Not always, but normally. Unless they keep scratching, of course, you might get somebody, <laughs> <laughs> one of the players. <laughs> it's one scratch each at the moment. Yeah, so earlier I was talking about how they do the draw at Derby City, how they redraw every round. 
Um, some of you out there might be thinking, well, wait a minute. What if we have like an odd number of players? Uh, what happens? Well, every round, you know, if there is an odd number of players in a round, and this happens very often, uh, somebody's going to get a buy. So it's not like not like a regular bracket where, you know, after the first round, there's no more buys. There could be buys anywhere in the tournament. Uh, at Derby City, including you can get a buy right into the finals, which I believe uh, happens f- fairly often also. Uh, and I think just happened this last time too. I think John Pinnegar, I think, got a buy into the one pocket finals. Yes, he did. And then complained that the <laughs> other players had had practice and he hadn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Pinnegar for you. <laughs> cool players. What are you going to do? Yeah, they were having a little discussion there. Mike DeShane wasn't happy with the rack, so Jason was kind of asking him why. Maybe a little bit of tomfoolery going on there. Jason not happy. Oh, he has made a ball, has he? He's made a ball. Yeah, he's made a ball, yeah. Now, this does bring up another rule at Derby City. No jump cues are allowed. You can jump the ball, but you can't use a jump cue. You have to use your full playing cue. Can't even use your break cue. It has to be your playing cue. Oh, what a nice little swerve. Nice shot. Perfect on the two. Nice angle. Three balls hanging right in front of the side. Four ball. Possible four nine or four six or roll forward for the four in the side. Looks like he's going to roll forward for the four on the side. Jason is about to play a new version of snooker, which has been invented for the for the non-pros, shall we say, for amateur or ex-high-class professionals. It's called Snooker 900. And it's 900 seconds, which is 15 minutes. And whoever winning, who's ever winning after 900 seconds is the winner. So the, the obvious, popular. so the obvious strategy is to uh, get a lead and then uh, stall as much as you can. Well, there is a shot clock as well, so you can't really stall that much. <laughs> But yes, you can use up, you know, as much, as many seconds as you can. Obviously, that's another tactic which is used in hay ball, the Chinese eight ball. But yeah, so Jason will be going to England to play in the the snooker nine hundred, and it's quite an entertaining game. And it's actually ball in hand as well. It's not. Wow. It's not put back in the D. It's it's hmm. it's it's um. You know, put it anywhere you like. So if uh, if you're snookered and you're kicking at a ball and you uh, foul, does the other player still have the option to uh, make you shoot again? Or is yes, that like a ball? Or is that like just... a? Or is that like a ball in hand foul? Um, no, it's ball in hand. Everything will be ball in hand. Okay. So yeah, it's just kind of a a faster, more up to date version to try and kind of you know bring it a little bit towards Paul. Let's hope Paul doesn't go too far towards snooker. That's my only fear, shall we say? Yeah, the way they keep making these (laughs) the way they keep making these pockets tighter and tighter every tournament. Uh, They're going to be playing on a snooker table before too long. Yeah, and you know my my real concern about going too near, too far towards snooker is the the noise, you know, where it's I don't like when the referees are calling for absolute silence, you know. I mean, there's you know there's music playing, there's people walking around, and it, that's the kind of game it is, right? I hope it doesn't go too far. Obviously, not sharking. I don't want to see that, but I just like to see the entertainment part of it still remain that was a really nice darts really nice safety there by jason really nice touch that was a very difficult safety he just executed and turned out very nice yeah 
Mos Moscone Cup Team Europe when Alex Laley was there as the captain he really is a safety master and I know he taught Albin and Jason a lot about the safety game as well and Paul Jason one of the best great kicker as well not sure about the red trainers though <laughs> probably about a thousand dollars Kevin you're asking the wrong guy I don't know anything about shoes nor do I <laughs> I know these pool players they love a nice expensive belt and and shoes as well it's like Shane with his Louis Vuitton and a nice big fancy watch yes yeah they love a Rolex don't they oh great two ball now what do you do here yeah he's not left uh, he's not left himself much combo the four ball or carom it choices wow Cut what a in. shot is he going to get a shot on the four yes he has I he believe he is played it with a lot of drag he's under hit it These pros, though, play this shot so well. Sky Woodward, very good at this shot. And so is Jason Short. Wow, what a shot. It makes it look done. easy. That's why they call him Eagle Eye. Indeed. And he's going to soar into a 4-1 lead here. Well, like I said at the beginning, this is not going to be a boring match. There's definitely some excitement there, pulling out the trick shots. Okay, maybe not trick shots, but those are some tough shots he shot. He yeah, played some amazing shots in the final of the Hanoi Open earlier on. Really terrific shots. And there you go, guys. Lots of great stuff on Railbirds TV. Please like the page, subscribe as well. And if you just click that bell like our robot did, you'll get all the notifications when we upload all the new videos. And we're doing it regularly. Loads of great stuff on there to watch. In conjunction robot. with... That was me clicking on that. I do it. I do it every video. I click on it every time just uh, to demonstrate. You're doing a fine job, sir. Now then, <laughs> has he got a shot at this two ball? I think he has. Look at this, and he can just kill the cue ball. Yeah, he looks dead the straight, two, on isn't us. it? And he'll be on the three ball. So this is looking good already. And he has to go three to the five. He's already made the four. So just stun out in between the nine and the seven. Leave himself nice and straight on this five ball or straightish. Six in the side, seven in the same pocket. And eight and nine. Five one. Simple, isn't it? Pulls an easy game, right? <laughs> <laughs> if only. Well, he's making it look easy. Hey, all those thousands of hours. I've actually been around Jason's house and he's got a, a table there and he's on it nearly every night. He also has his pool room, US1, where they recently had a matchroom event. One by Moritz Neuhausen. And all that work is paying off 5-1 up now. 
Yep, just crossed over that Zim. halfway point. Very good cook as well. Jason Shaw cooked me a, a lovely Korean beef bulgogi while I was there. And we also went fishing, caught some fish, and he even cooked that for us as well. Great guy, Jason Shaw. Nothing like the player you see during matches very intense bit of a show off at times that's his personality on the table but super nice family guy Liana and little Connor his kids and wife are up breaking off one in the side look at the two ball it's going to be on into the side pocket is it yes it is and every ball in the open once again can't see a problem here Kevin no two to the three is probably the toughest shot and well that's not that tough yeah five to the six just draw into the centre of the table. Oh, took a little bit of a risk there. It played it okay though. Almost in exhibition mode, isn't he? Yeah, he's completely just freewheeling now, just free stroking. Like he's in a practice session. People walking by the table, doesn't even bother him. Just ho hum. And just like that, 6-1. Yeah, very quick rack. He's breaking perfectly. Everything's working. And as you said, a little bit of uh, free rolling at the moment. Obviously, Mike Deshane not really playing that much anymore. Watch out for the one and the eight again. I wonder if Mike will come and have another little look. Probably. Doesn't inspect every Probably. rack. <laughs> Here he comes. Not a fan of that, to be honest. I think those days have gone, haven't they, Kevin? Where people leave gaps and all that to gain an advantage, especially with these template racks nowadays. The Aki rack we're playing with from Outsville. I hear what you're saying, but you know, someone's still you know you, you got to keep them honest. And if you made a rule where you're not allowed to inspect it, that just leaves it way too wide open for abuse. Yeah. So yeah, if you're playing rack your own, the other guy should absolutely have the right to inspect it. That's how I feel. Unlucky there. The Alex Laley coaching paying off almost there. Almost a perfect safety there. So Mike looking to thin this. Use the five to stop the two. Bring the cue ball up behind the nine maybe. That's good. I thought he might even have a chance of making the nine. But he's left him left him pretty tough. I think he might even have the snooker here. Yeah, Jason just doing the measuring. He actually tried to teach me how to do this. And 
no, I didn't. I didn't get it. Oh, wow. Oh, what a shot. Do you know, I think he's such a great kicker now. I know I keep harping on about the Hanoi Open, but he just played an unbelievable three-row kick on the three today and made it. It's on my Facebook page if you want to have a look, guys. Just so much, so talented. Had a bit of a quiet patch though just recently. He did win the the Matram Scottish Open at his sister's pool room in Glasgow in Scotland called McGoldrick's. I told you I was going to teach you some stuff tonight, didn't I, Kevin? <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, you did. <laughs> well, with a name like the Scottish Open, he better win it. Ooh, a little bit quick on that one. No problem, though. Really is a delight to watch when he's in full swing. Seven one, just two away now from a place in the next round, and Mike Duchesne might be dipping in his pocket for another hundred dollar bill. Look at that for a kick shot, just fabulous. And followed it up with a run out, nicely done. Was that uh, Mike Delotto that just poked his head up uh, in front of the camera? Not sure. Who did you say, sorry? Mike Delotter. I don't know him. All right, here we go, Jason with the brakes, 7-1. Well, didn't make the five or the one in the, always made the one in the opposite side pocket. He'll take that. Unfortunately, though, nine spoiling the party and the position on the two. If he had the jump cue available, he would be getting that out now, I believe, with a 7-1 lead. Still might even jump this with his full playing cue. Interesting how Mike Duchesne just put that rack back on the table. That's how I do it. It's almost OCD-ish. It's kind of getting it really straight on the rail. I have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and then straight away had to move it again. So sometimes people leave that template rack hanging on the rail, like with that point of it hanging over the edge of the rail. I believe if a ball comes and hits that point of the rack, I believe that would be a foul. I think normally it would be, but not in this because we're not playing all ball fouls. Well, it's a different kind of foul in though. that uh, well, you'd be interfering with the path of a moving object ball, so that is normally a foul. Like if you put a piece of chalk on the ah. table and the ball hits it, you know. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. I think he was trying to carry that in. Yeah, Mike straight away pointing to the four and the eight. I wonder if he might try and move them here. He absolutely did. And does he get a shot on the three? Well, yeah. A, not an easy shot to the side, but a shot. 
Doesn't have to do much with the cue ball. Just roll forward for the four in the corner. Oh, he's Where's playing he safe. Going? He's playing safe. He's playing safe. Doesn't like it. Too, th too thin of a opening in the side pocket. Well, he won't like this either. Has he got the hook? I'm not sure he has. No, he's looking at the, he's looking at the pot here. Or the the combo. Yeah, I don't think Jason has the full pocket, so which is why he was considering the combination. Or maybe he's considering the combination to clear the pocket for the four later, because if he shoots the three and comes around, the four wouldn't have a pocket. Yeah, great. Look at that for an effort. Almost got in behind that seven. Very good effort. Like just waiting for the player on the next table. This is kind of a busy table, this one. It's right in the middle, isn't it? I'm trying to work out, Kevin. Obviously, I've been to Derby City once. I'm trying to work out where that table is. Um... This is, I believe, uh, table nine, which is right in front of the tournament desk, out in the middle okay. of the, out in the middle of the room, not one of the side tables, but one of the ones in the middle, uh, right in front of the tournament desk. So the tournament desk would be to the tournament desk would be to the left off of your screen. So, is three rows of table here? Is it? Two rows, two main rows two plus rows. plus uh, plus tables off to the side. But two main Yes, rows. I remember those ones. Yeah. I know exactly where you are. Bit of a wild swing there. Oh, and that's going to set up on. perfect for Jason. Well, he has come up a little short. He's left himself a bit of a tester here. Four up the rail to the corner. Handles it with ease. Yeah, played confidently, wasn't it? These players are so good at those shots. You know, when they're slightly out of position, you think, oh, this is a tough shot. And we kind of think of our game don't we when we're playing those shots and we know how tough they are but these top elite pros just get down and knock them in it's going to be a rival at the hill for Jason Shaw very very quickly I think Draw off the back rail. And unmissable nine. So much so much. Just Shane says you can have that one. At Derby City there is a no conceding the nine ball rule, but it's not enforced very often as you can see. Jason's semi-final of the Hanoi Open. He was up against Fedor Gorst and Fedor missed the seven to go heel hill and conceded the seven, eight and nine. It's safe to say he's going to play a push out here. Yeah, the one nine does not look lined up dead to a pocket, so kicking at it wouldn't really do much good. Might go in the side, this side pocket closest to us at the bottom of the screen. Ah, uh, two rails on the if side. Okay. Off, yeah, yeah. That's what he's. <laughs> that's what he's looking at. I think he just looked at the one in the side off the nine. Oh, did he? Well, about three balls were heading towards pockets there. 
Still nothing easy though, is it, for Mike? Uh, just a safety shot down behind the 4-2. Oh, he's gone for it. Now then, he's had a little bit of a run there and you can't begrudge him that, can you? Oh, even nudged the five over the corner, over the side. And bonus. I think, I think there's a, a rather large lady warming yeah. up her vocal cords. I think you're right, and he says that's good. Yeah, these four balls are all practically hanging. Even I could get out from here, so not surprising that he says that's good. So Jason Shaw defeating Mike DeShane 9-1. Both players had zero losses, so Mike is not out of the tournament yet. He can reach in his pocket, pull out another $100 bill, and rebuy. Anyway, we have plenty more action from the Derby City on our channel coming up. Be sure you are subscribed. And with that, I am Kevin Ross along with Mark White. We'll catch you guys next time. See you guys.